I can't move. Your DNA communes with the apple. You have activated it. Welcome to Mojo Plays. Today, we're looking at the Assassin's Creed timeline explained. The entire history of Earth might be packed into this franchise. In this video, we're going through the entire plot of Assassin's Creed chronologically. Before we begin, we publish new content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The story of AC starts millennia ago, around 75,000 BC, during the Isu era. The Isu were a vast advanced society, dubbed the First Civilization notable for creating advanced weapons and gadgets called Pieces of Eden. The most well-known piece of Eden was the Apple of Eden, a device used by the Isu to mind control human beings. The Isu created humans to be their slaves and then continued to manipulate them until, eventually, war broke out between both species. This was led by Adam and Eve, who stole the apple from the Garden of Eden, which was, in fact, a vast Isu city. Atlantis and Asgard would eventually be revealed as Isu cities as well. Adam and Eve were able to break the Apple of Eden's mind control because they were both human Isu hybrids, the result of interspecies procreation. Adam, I have it! Eve! The Isu had many different branches, not all friendly with each other, that would eventually go on to form the basis of Earth religions and mythologies, as humanity only dimly remembered these powerful gods. Adam and Eve and the Apple of Eden are, of course, a major part of Abrahamic religions, while different groups of Isu eventually became the Roman, Greek, and Norse deities. Of the Greek Isu, their experiments eventually became the famous monsters roaming ancient Greece, like the Minotaur hidden in an Isu labyrinth or even Medusa herself. The Norse Isu, on the other hand, known as the Aesir, battled many famous monsters as well, but also built Idrisil. In myth, Idrisil is an all-important world tree, crucial to the Norse pantheon. In Assassin's Creed, it's a complex supercomputer, capable of accurately predicting the future and containing deep simulations. There you are! Hail Dragon, welcome! The human Isu war continued to rage, though not all Isu were directly involved. They learned that a cataclysm was on the way, an enormous solar flare, and a group of three, known as the Capitoline Triad, began to work to save both species from extinction. This triad was made up of Jupiter, Juno, and Minerva. Juno despised humans, viewing them as inferior. She was horrified when her father Saturn was murdered by a human right in front of her. Minerva, meanwhile, was more sympathetic to the humans, but preoccupied with the disaster. The Isu built enormous vaults to use as bunkers and hide their technology, with Minerva desperate to keep the pieces of Eden out of human control. But the Isu ultimately failed and the disaster, which would become known as the Great Catastrophe, wiped out large numbers of humans and Isu. All their solutions to the disaster failed, though some showed promise. Among them was Juno's attempt to make the Isu immortal, for which her husband Aita volunteered himself as a test subject. Aita died in the process, but would be repeatedly reincarnated. There was also Idrisil, which managed to rescue the consciousness of the Aesir, allowing them too to be reincarnated. Ultimately though, humans were more numerous and more adaptable allowing them to survive the catastrophe and rebuild civilization on Earth. Outside of their reincarnation efforts and the holograms remaining in the vaults, the Isu themselves were completely gone. We didn't catch up with humanity for tens of thousands more years until we met Leonidas I of Sparta at the Battle of Thermopylae in the year 480 BC. Leonidas was descended from human Isu hybrids like Adam and Eve, and his spear was actually a Spear of Eden. Though he and his army of Spartans were defeated in Thermopylae by the Persians, led by Xerxes, he went down in history as a legendary military leader. His granddaughter Cassandra went on to wield his broken spear and unravel some of the lost mysteries of the Isu, including visiting a simulation of Atlantis and defeating their rogue experiments. 
Cassander was instrumental in the Peloponnesian War, but also aimed to eradicate the cult of Cosmos, responsible for tearing her family apart and manipulating her half-brother Alexios. Eventually, she eliminated the cult from the Greek world. Finally, Cassandra met Darius, who invented the hidden blade and assassinated Xerxes with it. Eventually, Cassandra more or less retired, taking the staff of Hermes from her father, the mathematician Pythagoras. It was a powerful piece of Eden that granted the wielder immortality. Give me something. We've already fought once today. Darius was one of a handful of legendary assassins to operate during ancient times, with others including Iltani and Wei Yu. Iltani was responsible for assassinating Alexander the Great in the year 323 BC, while in 210 BC, Wei Yu would dispatch the first emperor of China, Qin Shi Hong. But the cult of Cosmos eventually returned in another form, the Order of Ancients, in the first century BC. Like the cult, the Order was now controlling ancient Rome and Egypt from the shadows. While aiming to get into an Isu vault in Siwa, Egypt, the Medjai of Siwa, Bayek, and his son Kimu were brought to them. In the ensuing chaos, Bayek mistakenly took his own son's life. Bayek and his wife Aya would decide to hunt down the Order, much like Cassandra did, wanting vengeance for their son so he could find peace in the afterlife. Throughout this, they eventually allied against the Pharaoh Ptolemy XIII with Cleopatra and Julius Caesar. Bayek and Aya led Caesar and Cleopatra into the tomb of Alexander the Great, which enabled Caesar to get Alexander's staff, a piece of Eden, and betray them. It was Aya who presented Cleopatra with the venomous snake that would eventually kill her, and Aya who stabbed Caesar first during the Ides of March. Aya was then metaphorically reborn as the assassin Amonet and she and Bayek created the Hidden Ones, a brotherhood that would continue to fight the Order of Ancients whenever it reared its head. Let nothing grieve you beyond measure, for your life is short and time will claim its toll. A few decades later, in 41 AD, and another legendary assassin, Leonius, took down the notorious Roman Emperor Caligula with a dagger. It was also during the first century AD that the Abrahamic religions began to form with many key religious figures, including Jesus and Moses, thought to have wielded pieces of Eden, including the Shroud of Eden and another Staff of Eden. By the 9th century AD, the Hidden Ones were operating in Baghdad, at the height of the Islamic Golden Age. We don't know much about this yet, as it's going to be covered in Assassin's Creed Mirage, but it will cover the youth of Basim ibn Ishaq, during his time in Baghdad, Basim became a master assassin, but also learned that he was one of the reincarnated Aesir, whose consciousness was preserved by Idrisil. Specifically, he was Loki. Basim eventually met the Viking Sigurd Styrborsson, whom he recognized as another Aesir, the god Tyr, whose hand was bitten off by Loki's child Fenrir. He traveled with Sigurd back to Norway and met Eivor Varinstatir, Sigurd's adoptive sibling. Sigurd took Eivor, Basim, and his Raven clan away from Norway, sailing across the North Sea to settle in England in the year 873, where they built Ravensthorpe. Sigurd continually disappeared with Basim, leaving Eivor in charge. As well as building the town, Eivor helped Basim's apprentice Hytham as he tracked down the Order of Ancients. The Order was back and now controlling England, and Eivor unmasked the leader as King Alfred the Great. After forming alliances with all of England, Eivor eventually reconciled with Sigurd and the two went back to Norway, where they found what remained of Yggdrasil. Eivor discovered they were the reincarnation of Odin and fought Basim, who tried to trap them in the computer. But Eivor was victorious and it was Basim who was trapped instead. Eivor also crucially traveled to Vinland, North America for a while, hunting down their rival and order member Kjoltvi the Cruel. Yultvi had found an apple of Eden, and Eivor recovered it, but sensed it wasn't meant for them, and they entrusted it to the Native American tribe in the area who lived above the Grand Temple of the Isu, the same central temple where Jupiter, Juno, and Minerva once worked. Eivor also crossed paths with Cassandra briefly, who was still operating in the world over a thousand years after we last saw her. <laughs> 
200 years later, and the Hidden Ones and the Order of Ancients were operating again, this time in the Middle East. But they weren't called the Hidden Ones or the Order of Ancients anymore, and much knowledge about the Isu appeared to have been lost. The Hidden Ones had become the Assassin Brotherhood, led by al Mu'alim, the Old Man of the Mountain, while the Order of Ancients was the Templar Order. Both factions operated in the Holy Land during the Crusades. The assassin Altair ibn La Ahad was sent to kill nine key figures by al Mu'alim after he was demoted for failing to recover the Ark of the Covenant from the Templars, which contained an Apple of Eden. Altair took out his targets but questioned the true motivations of al Mu'alim. He found al Mu'alim had been corrupted by the power of the Apple and fought him, taking the Apple which revealed the locations of many more Isu vaults, and becoming the new mentor of the assassins. Altair also married a former Templar, Maria Thorpe. Altair and Maria were instrumental in ending Genghis Khan's war, with the assassin Kulong Gal getting involved in Khan's death in 1227 BC. Altair eventually returned to Syria and found the assassins had been taken over by Abbas, Altair's longtime rival in a coup and Altair had to defeat him to get the Brotherhood back on track, though Maria died in the process. Altair eventually built a library in Masayev Castle, sealing himself in the library to pass away. On to the 15th century and another human Isu hybrid made waves, Joan of Arc. Joan of Arc was a major military leader during the Hundred Years' War though she was eventually put on trial for having demonic visions and burned at the stake in 1431. But the secret of Joan of Arc's strength wasn't just her Isu DNA, but she also wielded a Sword of Eden. In 1459, Ezio Auditore de Firenze was born. Unbeknownst to him, he came from a long line of assassins, but his noble family was targeted by the Pazzi conspirators during his youth. His father Giovanni and his two brothers Federico and Petruccio were hanged as part of the conspiracy, which ultimately aimed to depose the Medici family from controlling Renaissance Florence. Ezio donned his father's assassin robes and got his mother Maria and his sister Claudia to safety in the Auditori Villa in Monteregioni, Tuscany. Ezio was trained for years here by his uncle Mario, and was introduced to the sanctuary underneath the villa a chamber containing statues of the seven legendary assassins we've already mentioned. Darius, Iltani, Wei Yu, Amunet, Leonias, Qualong Gal, and Altair, allowing Ezio to learn about them. Ezio traveled across Italy, hunting down the Pazzi conspirators and making key alliances with figures like Caterina Sforza. Eventually, he ended up tracking Rodrigo Borcia in Venice, Templar Grand Master who had gained possession of an Apple of Eden. <laughs> Always the fighter, just like your father. Well rejoiced, my child. At roughly the same time, in 1492, over in Spain, the Spanish assassin Aguilar de Nero was at work in Granada protecting Prince Ahmed de Granada from the Templars. Ezio briefly visited Spain at this time, and was involved in Aguilar's successful attempt to steal an Apple of Eden from Sultan Muhammad XII. Aguilar entrusted this particular apple to Christopher Columbus for him to hide. Credo. Back in Italy in 1499, Rodrigo Borgia had become Pope Alexander VI. He had the Apple of Eden and the Papal Staff needing both to access an Isu vault underneath the Sistine Chapel. Ezio infiltrated St. Peter's Basilica to reckon with him, defeating Rodrigo but letting him live. Ezio then explored the vault himself, finding and communing with a hologram of Minerva. Minerva, however, wasn't talking to Ezio, but providing a message to someone named Desmond 500 years in the future. Who is Desmond? I don't understand. Please wait. I have so many questions. Ezio fled St. Peter's with the apple and his uncle Mario back to Monteregioni, only to be pursued by Rodrigo's son, Cesare, who attacked the villa and killed Mario, taking the apple back. Ezio then journeyed to Rome where he met with Nico Machiavelli, who helped him put a plan into place to liberate Rome from the Borgias and the Templars. Ezio assassinated many key figures and succeeded, eventually chasing Cesare to Navarri and killing him. 
The throne was mine. Wanting something does not make it your right. What do you know? In Ezio's later years, in 1511, he traveled to Masiev Castle wanting to open Altair's library, but realized he needed a set of Masiev keys that contained Altair's memories. He went to Constantinople to find them, aligning himself with the Ottoman assassins and meeting Sophia Sator. He also met famed cartographer Piri Reis and future Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent when he was still a prince. Ultimately, Ezio retrieved all the keys, entered the library, and determined that there were things in the world he wasn't meant to know. He returned to Sophia and finally settled down with her, becoming one of the most influential master assassins in the history of the Brotherhood. I have lived my life as best I could, not knowing its purpose, but drawn forward like a moth to a distant moon. Throughout the 16th century, the famed assassin Xiao Jun was also operating in China. A former concubine of the Emperor, she was rescued and dedicated her life to the Assassin Brotherhood, even traveling to Italy so that she could train under Ezio. Upon returning to China, she took down huge networks of Templars, including the Eight Tigers, to avenge the Chinese assassins after they were purged in large numbers. I will undo all that you have done. I will rebuild the Brotherhood and recruit those who wish to make our land a place of freedom. We're now in the 18th century, the busiest century by far for the Assassins with Edward Kenway. Edward was born in Wales in the 1690s, and by the 1700s, he had tired of his life there and left his wife behind to become a privateer in the Caribbean. He then betrayed the Royal Navy to become a pirate. He got involved with the Assassins after getting shipwrecked with turncoat Duncan Walpole, who was about to sell out the Brotherhood to the Templars, who were in the West Indies looking for the observatory. Edward briefly posed as Walpole before getting found out, finding himself captured and aboard the 1715 Treasure Fleet. The fleet was lost in a hurricane, but Edward stole his ship the Jackdaw and met Adewale, who'd become his quartermaster. By happenstance, while trying to protect the pirate haven of Nassau, Edward ended up working alongside the assassins. Natural stronghold used by a French captain named Ducasse. Julian Ducasse, the Templar. Name's right. Didn't know he had a title. Witnessing his pirate friends die one by one, though, he saw the error of his ways and decided to join the Brotherhood properly himself. He also met Bartholomew Roberts, known today as Black Bart who turned out to be a sage. The sages are those reincarnations of Juno's husband Aita, recognizable by their different colored eyes. Roberts wanted to get to the observatory himself, which was in northern Jamaica and contained a crystal skull that could be used to locate anybody in the world with a sample of their blood. Edward killed Roberts, took the skull, and finished the years-long Templar hunt. Eventually, he returned to England with his daughter Jennifer, where he became a master assassin and fathered another child, Haytham. Years after Edward left the Caribbean, however, and his old quartermaster, Adewale, now skilled assassin himself, was still there. Adewale shipwrecked in Haiti in 1735 and spent the next two years working around Port-au-Prince to help liberate slaves and bring about the Haitian Revolution. I will return, yes. But I feel a tide changing within me. I'm no longer young. Back in England, Edward was raising Haytham to be an assassin, only for Haytham to eventually become disillusioned with the assassin cause and defect to the Templars. In 1754, he was sent to the American colonies by the Templars, establishing the colonial right of the Templar Order and leading the Templars in their search for the Grand Temple. He brought Charles Lee into the order and met a Native American woman named Zio. After freeing her tribe's people from British forces, Atham and Zio slept together, conceiving a child, who would eventually become known as Connor. Haytham continued to lead the Templars, eventually taking a new recruit under his wing, Shea Cormac. Shea was an Irish-American from New York who, along with his childhood friend Liam O'Brien, joined the Assassin Brotherhood. But while trying to recover a piece of Eden, Shea inadvertently caused the 1755 Lisbon earthquake. He defected to the Templars, siding with the British during the Seven Years' War and hunting down the colonial Brotherhood's leaders. These included mentor Achilles Davenport, 
Haytham and Shay tracked Achilles and Liam into the Arctic and another Isu vault, assassinating Liam. Rather than kill Achilles, Haytham shot him in the leg and permanently injured him, so that he might warn the Brotherhood not to chase the Precursor artifacts. He understands what these Precursor sites are now. Without him, the Assassins may continue their search. Connor, meanwhile, grew up in the tribe knowing little of his father. But after his village was burned down by colonists, including Charles Lee, he was shown the Apple of Eden by the clan leader. She explained that the land the tribe was on was sacred and that it was their duty to keep the apple safe. The very same apple that, roughly 900 years previously, had been recovered from Kjoltfi by Eivor. Juno spoke to Connor through the apple and showed him the assassin symbol. Connor left his village in 1769 and journeyed through the frontier to arrive at the Davenport homestead, where he met Achilles. Achilles trained Connor for years to become the assassin who could free America from the Templars. Connor ingratiated himself with various key figures during the American Revolution, like George Washington, Benjamin Franklin, and Samuel Adams, helping the Patriots to fight against the British, still largely controlled by the Templars. He eventually traveled to New York and met his father, where they worked together for a while until Connor eventually had to fight and assassinate him. He also recovered an Apple of Eden from George Washington after Washington saw a vision of himself using it to become a tyrannical king. Much further south, and the assassin Aveline de Grand Prix was working in New Orleans at the same time Connor was working in the north, with the two actually teaming up to take down a target at one point. Aveline moonlit as an assassin, trained by Agate in the bayou, and eventually traveled to Mexico where she put a stop to a Templar plot to bring slaves there and find an Isu artifact in Chichen Itza. She finally discovered that the Templar she was hunting was her own stepmother, Madeline, and she assassinated her. No! <laughs> Daughter? Only two people can call me that. You banished one and sacrificed the other. Shea Cormac was still operating all this time and in 1776 went to Paris, where he killed the assassin Charles Dorian in Versailles. Charles' son Arno was there at the time with his childhood friend Lise de la Serre, and her father Francois de la Serre took Arno in. But it turned out that the de la Serres were Templars. Arno and Elise fell in love, but then her father was killed during a Templar coup. Arno was sent to the Bastille for the crime, where he met the assassin Pierre Bellic. They escaped during the storming of the Bastille in 1789, and Bellic trained Arno to be an assassin. The French assassins and Templars had a truce at the time, though Bellic tried to destroy it by murdering the assassin leader Mirabeau. Arno reunited with Elise, now a Templar, to investigate. Eventually, the two uncovered a conspiracy led by Francois Thomas Germain, another sage at Maida who was trying to take control of the Templars. He found a Sword of Eden, but was assassinated by Arno, though Elise died in the battle. Arno then exiled himself to Fransade, where he went up against Napoleon, who was trying to find another Apple of Eden. Arno recovered it instead and sent it to Egypt, but Napoleon got his hands on it anyway and used it in his military campaigns. I shouted, long live the Republic, a man of principle. Life is more valuable than dignity. Decades later in 1839, and the assassin Arbaz Mir was active in Amitsar in India. Britain was still being controlled by the Templars by this point, and they came to India in search of the Kohinoor, which was another extremely powerful piece of Eden once wielded by Juno personally. Though the Templars succeeded in assassinating the Maharaja, Arbaz switches the Kohinoor for a convincing replica and gives the Kohinoor to Ethan Fry, a British assassin. Are you okay? Did he hurt you? Did you not see? I hurt him. Other assassins were also at work in Britain in the mid-1800s, as in the 1850s, a young acrobat named Pierrette got involved in their ongoing conflict after the mathematician Ada Lovelace confided in her. Lovelace had been forced into making a world-ending weapon called the Engine of History for the Templars, and Pirette and the assassin Simone Price spent two decades trying to stop the Templars from building it. Out in Crawley, Ethan Fry was the father of twins, Evie and Jacob Fry, raising them into the Brotherhood. The Frys grew up to be capable, if reckless, assassins, who decided to liberate London from the control of the Templar Grand Master, Crawford Starrett. They met Indian assassin Henry Green and made their hideout on a stolen train. 
Evie went to work tracking down a Shroud of Eden, while Jacob began assassinating all of Starek's Templar lieutenants. Though they clashed repeatedly, the Fry Twins did eventually defeat Starek, earning the support of Queen Victoria. Evie went with Henry to live in India, where they got married, though decades later, in 1888, she was called back to Britain urgently. Jacob was suspected to be Jack the Ripper, who'd murdered five women in Whitechapel. Evie cleared his name and took down the Ripper, who was actually a rogue assassin betraying the Brotherhood, covering up the truth. At the turn of the 20th century, another famous face got involved with the assassins, Nikola Tesla, who helped the assassins to destroy a Templar laboratory in Tunguska, Siberia, causing the 1908 Tunguska event because the lab contained a volatile Russian Imperial staff, yet another Staff of Eden. He used an energy weapon to do this. In 1916, Jacob Fry's granddaughter, Lydia Fry, was operating as an assassin in London. She made an alliance with Winston Churchill during the First World War, with London subject to a Zeppelin bombing campaign. The German spies were also working for the Templar Order, so Lydia and Churchill's goals aligned, and she assassinated many high-ranking Templars in war-torn London. I dare not approach Mr. Asquith without firmer evidence, but I believe they pose an immediate threat. The following year, and the Russian Revolution broke out, leaving it up to assassin Nikolai Orlov to protect Anastasia Romanov. Orlov had previously worked with Tesla on the disastrous attempt to retrieve the piece of Eden from Tunguska. The Romanovs were not, in fact, executed by the Bolsheviks, but actually by Templars who wanted a precursor box the family had. Orlov got Anastasia out of Russia, where she took on the identity of Anna Anderson. Ireland was also in turmoil at this time, with the Irish War of Independence breaking out in 1919. We don't know much about how the assassins were involved, but a teaser for an Abstergo entertainment game had the title Hell in Hibernia, implying that the assassins were involved in the conflict. Similarly, Abstergo also made a game called Jazz Age Junkies at one point, seemingly showing that Templars and assassins were influential during Prohibition in the United States and the rise of organized crime. The enigmatic Templar operative known as the Black Cross, real name Albert Bolden, was also active in the 1920s in Shanghai. By the late 1930s, the assassins and Templars were engaged in the Spanish Civil War with Albert Bolden arriving in Spain and siding with an assassin cell that had been infiltrated by a member of the Instruments of the First Will. Bolden was going after the real Kohinoor, which had fallen into his possession but then been stolen. The Kohinoor ended up buried in rural Spain where they hoped nobody else would find it. At the same time, in 1937, Abstergo Industries was founded, and the Templars had a new public face. In 1939, war broke out in Europe when Germany invaded Poland, a war that wouldn't have happened without the Templars manipulating things. All the world leaders across the Allied and Axis powers were, in fact, being controlled by Templars, including Hitler, who, along with FDR, had his own Apple of Eden. Nazi Germany eventually lost the conflict and surrendered in 1945. Assassins and Templars were even involved in the Vietnam War years later and continued operating throughout the Cold War. A descendant of the Templar Black Cross Albert Bolden, Andre, actually fought in Vietnam, and the Templars were also involved in the assassination of JFK, not to mention engineering the entire space race and moon landing so that they could retrieve another Apple of Eden from the lunar surface. Things started to pick up again with the Assassins and Templars in 2012, when the son of Assassin mentor William Miles, Desmond, was kidnapped by Abstergo. Desmond had already fled the Assassins, but found himself forced to use a new piece of technology Abstergo had developed, the Animus, enabling him to relive his ancestors' memories, starting with Altair in 1191. Eventually, though, Desmond found out that the Abstergo employee who ran the Animus, Lucy Stillman, was actually an assassin. She broke him out of Abstergo's Rome headquarters, where they met up with her assassin cell, Sean Hastings and Rebecca Crane. It was through the Animus that Desmond finally received Minerva's message to him, given to Ezio 500 years previously. By following Ezio's memories, they were able to find in the present day the Isu vault underneath the Roman Colosseum where an Apple of Eden was contained. But Desmond was controlled by Juno via the Apple and he assassinated Lucy, 
who was actually a Templar triple agent all along. He fell into a coma where he met the shattered consciousness of another Animus user captured by Abstergo, Clay Kesmeric, though he was eventually free. Desmond then relived Connor's memories, and finally, they were able to access the Grand Temple of the Isu in New York, where Desmond averted the second great catastrophe, though he died in the process and freed Juno. It is done. The world is saved. You played your part well, Desmond. Abstergo managed to get Desmond's body and use his DNA to continue accessing the memories of his ancestors hiring people to use the Animus to build their in-world video games. With Juno released, however, Aita was back in play in the 2010s, with a new sage arriving at Abstergo, John Standish. Standish manipulated a new Abstergo employee, aiming to use their body as a host for Juno, who existed as a digital consciousness. But his plan failed, and he was killed. Following this, another researcher, nicknamed the Numskull, helped the Templars restore their computer system by reliving Shay's memories. The Numskull was later brought into the Order fully, joining Melanie LeMay, Otso Berg, and Violet da Costa in the Modern Order. Another assassin initiate also infiltrated Abstergo at this time, reliving the memories of Arno Dorian and the Fries, while Sean and Rebecca, now without Desmond and Lucy, continued to operate after going undercover in Abstergo themselves. Got something. Isabel Ardant has a meeting here in hours. Uh, doesn't say with who. The modern day assassins and Templars continued working and developing their own Animus technology, but there was a major incident at Abstergo's Madrid headquarters that decade. Callum Lynch, whose parents were assassins, was captured by Abstergo just like Desmond, and forced to relive the memories of Aguilar the Nerha. Eventually, Callum broke out, killed the leader Alan Ricken, and retrieved the Apple of Eden from where Columbus had hidden it. A while later, the Assassins and Templars had put their differences aside once again, because Juno's plans, in place for over 70,000 years, were finally coming to fruition. She had her instruments of the First Will, a cult dedicated to her, take over a Templar operation, Project Phoenix, to grow her a new body using a recovered Shroud of Eden. Violet da Costa was one of the key double agents also working for the instruments. By this point, brutal Templar Otso Berg was the next Templar Black Cross, just like Albert Bolden, and he had to team up with the assassins to stop Juno from getting the Kohinoor. They'd finally tracked it to Spain, but the instruments got hold of it, taking it to a secret lab in Australia. Juno succeeded in growing herself a new body, but at the last second was assassinated by Charlotte de la Cruz, who had enough Isu DNA to use the Kohinoor to distract her, putting an end to Assassin's Creed's main antagonist. In 2017, Abstergo agent Leila Hassan was going against the company to live the memories of Bayek and Aya, only for Abstergo to turn on her and cause her to defect the Assassins. Working with them, Leila eventually ventured to Atlantis in Greece, where she met Cassandra 2,500 years later, and Cassandra gave up the staff of Hermes after all that time. The staff began to affect Layla, however, causing her to murder one of her closest friends, Victoria the Bow. With a different assassin cell, this one including Sean and Rebecca, Layla found Eivor's grave in Vinland and was able to use her memories to locate the Isu supercomputer Idrisil. But this was all part of Basim's plan as he'd been the one using the computer to lure Layla in so he could use the staff to bring himself back to life. The staff, which also contained the consciousness of Loki's Isu lover, Alethea. Layla was doomed to an eternity inside the computer, known as the Grey. It turned out that following his death in 2012, Desmond Miles suffered the same fate, becoming the Reader. He warned Layla that another disaster was incoming, and the two settled down to work out a solution while Bossom demanded to meet William Miles in person. It's believed that Bossom is planning to resurrect Alethea and find what remains of his lost children, but you'll have to keep playing to find out what might happen next. And that was the Assassin's Creed timeline explained. I will put them to good use to find my children and bring my family back together. Check out these other great clips from Mojo Plays, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos.